This is the San Jose de la Sorra Reservation. It sits near El Valle de Guadalupe, about 60 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. It is peaceful here, with small houses dotting the landscape. These days, there are about 80 families left. Most live with no running water or internet. It's hard to get a cell signal, and electricity was only introduced about 15 years ago. One of the natives is 61-year-old Virginia Melendez Silva. She operates a tiny store next to her home. Only the local Mexicans who live nearby know that Virginia and her community are here. Yo sí sé, y sé la historia porque me gusta la historia. Sí me gusta su cultura y aparte el lugar es muy bonito y, y ocupa salir de lo mismo, de la misma rutina, ver otras partes, ver otra gente. Visitors like this man from the state of Michoacán say he had no idea there were Kumeyaay people living on reservations in northern Mexico. Today, he's here with his friend Jesus, who lives nearby. They came to donate some goods for the families in need. No sabía. Y entonces es primera vez que vinemos y mi amigo me había dicho vinemos y, y nos vinimos en un camino muy largo para llegar aquí y es bonita la gente. Pienso que muchos mexicanos no sabemos que aquí está, que existen ellos aquí y, y pero esto es hermoso como lo reciben a uno. Virginia's face lights up when Dr. Stan Rodriguez arrives from San Diego. He's got family on this reservation. It's a tight-knit community, and when he's here, he's greeted with affection. Those who can communicate with him in their native Kumeyaay. Virginia is one of 10 people left on this reservation who can still speak the Kumeyaay language fluently. She was born here and converses in Spanish and Kumeyaay. Virginia has five children and nine grandchildren. She's the matriarch of her family and says it's difficult to maintain the language with the younger generations. She said, even though they do those other things, she still tells them, you need to know your culture, you need to do this. And maintaining the Kumeyaay culture and language is a mission for Dr. Rodriguez. So tell me a little bit about these schools that are here on the reservation. But the problems with these bilingual schools is, although they say bilingual, they were not. They were agents of assimilation. They would tell the students and the parents, if you want to do good in school, you need to speak Spanish and not the native language. And this is why, if you notice, a lot of the children, they may understand Kumeyaay, but they don't speak it. We need to get drastic. We need to get radical and bring, bring about change by targeting uh, this resource that we have, the most precious resource we have, is our youth, and doing uh, an, an immersion program that would support language revitalization. It can't be on just one side of the border. It's all of us Kumeyaay working together to make that happen. And in order for the children to be successful, their parents and grandparents need to find a way to be successful too. The Kumeyaay people have learned to sustain themselves with what they know. Some of the men are hired as ranchers, some of the women cook or make baskets, and in recent years, they started making their own cheese or growing grapes to make wine. So she said, this is the wind, this is flowers. Virginia carefully demonstrates how she weaves necklaces and baskets out of willow and branches. It can take up to 10 hours to perfect her craft. So she was saying that she had learned this since she was young, so she never forgot it. And with these things, the baskets and stuff, that's how she makes money. That's part of her job. And this is where some of Virginia's work will end up, 
across the border in San Diego. Virginia's niece, Marta Rodriguez, who grew up on the Baja Reservation, now owns a small store in Old Town called Kosai, which means the drying place in Kumeyaay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And she helps organize many cultural events, helping those who are not able to travel back and forth, especially the elders. Because in Kumeyaay tradition, many babies are born at home on the reservation, not in hospitals. And obtaining visas is difficult because many people don't have official documents. Long time ago, we, you know, people like give a birth in a in a community, so we don't have any like um, office for doing registrations. So, a lot of us, a lot of the elders, you know, they didn't have um, paperwork, you know, the birth certificates. We ha we used to have a program the Calcume uh, Task Force, and then uh, so I, I get involved with that program. So I was helping uh, with the meetings because we bring people. Uh, to San Diego to do the, the passport, and then to Tijuana to do the visas. So we just go, you know, help the groups. And then uh, right now we're doing the, the permits, you know, to cross the border for cultural events. For those Baja residents, especially the elders who receive the permits, attending special cultural events on the American side of the border only helps the younger generations preserve their true history and identity. When I was younger, I, I visited over here with my mom. My mom, you know, she, I uh, know a lot of the people, a lot of the elders over here. So I traveled with her over here. And then, um, so later when I moved over here, you know, a lot of, I knew a lot of the elders and, uh, you know, just get involved with the community events. And then um, that's what like, the importance for me, like to be united, you know, have like the North and the South together, so do more events to be united. Southern, 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 Southern.